Welcome to Programming Kids. My name is Lynn, and in today's video, we will be applying the math rules that we learned in our past video. So in our last video, we learned all the rules that you shouldn't apply and that you should apply on Python so that you can easily make Python do your math homework. Well, Python can be as fast as a calculator and they can give you the answer no matter how complex the question might be. So let's open up idle. All right. So usually in our videos, we open a new file, but because you probably want the answer to come fast and you don't want to waste your time by opening a new file and running it, you can just do it on the Python shell over here. Okay, so we are going to be going through plus, minus, multiplication, division, and the order of operation. So let's start with the plus or addition. So let's type a question and it can be really long, it doesn't matter. No matter how long it is, Python will still give you the answer. So let me type one over here. And then I, I usually like to keep space between it just so that it looks neat. You can do that too if you want. All right, so here we go. I typed a long number and another long number here that I want Python to add. So usually in English, we type equal or a question mark. But unfortunately, if you do that on Python, it will give you an error. And let's try it just so that you guys can understand what do I mean by error. Whoops, they gave me syntax error, invalid syntax. So even though in our English language, we usually put an equal sign to make the question full and just understandable. Python, their language is different and they don't understand what's an equal sign because we usually store variables using them. Nor a question mark. Let me just type another one and use a question mark and let's see if it will work. And here, whoops, another syntax error. And you can notice that Python highlighted the question mark. They don't understand what does that mean. Okay, now let's try typing a question without including the equal sign or the question mark. And let's press, let's press enter. Yay, I got my answer. So you should always obey Python just so that they can obey you with whatever you need. Let's move on to um, subtraction or minusing. So it's exactly the same, nothing is different. So let's me type in a question. And press minus okay so here's my question I am going to be pressing enter and got it okay so now what do you think happen if I make the small number minus the big number do you think I'll get a positive sign or a negative sign let's try it out All right, here I have a question and we are going to be pressing enter right now. I have 98 minus 5,670. That's not possible, right? So they have to give us a negative sign. Let's see if Python is smart. Python is indeed smart. They gave us minus 5580. So if we type this normally, like five, six, seven, eight, minus 98, they give us a positive 5580. Five, well, now that we have 
gone through negative and positive or um, plus and minus or addition and subtraction, it's time for us to move to multiplication and division. So let's start with multiplication. For multiplication, we use an asterisk as the multiplication sign, which is this. You have to hold on shift and eight and you'll get it. Okay, so let me type in a question and use my asterisk multiplied by and press enter and here it is you get your answer let's try it again and press enter and here it is moving on to the division we have to use a backslash as our division sign so let's type in another question for python to solve and press entry and here it is so you can see that it's five, 51 point something that's because all of these numbers are remainders and if you try to do it on a calculator they'd probably give you the same thing now let's do something that might be divisible by another thing so how about six divided by three the answer is supposed to be two let's see if python will give us the answer Python gave us 2.0 so they they just want to clear out that there are no remainders and this is why they add a zero okay now let's move on to the order of operation so let me type in a question and let's see how can we solve it there might be a way to solving it in two ways so let me just type it in first Okay, here's my question. Five minus three plus seven. So if you do it normally starting from this side and do five minus three, you get two and plus seven is nine. But if you want to start these two by using, um, solving these two first, it would be different. So let's try it by using three plus seven, which is 10 and then um, using 5 minus 10. That gives us a negative number. So I am going to go ahead and just press enter right now and the answer is 9. What Python did is they did 5 minus 3 first which is 2 and add a 7 which is 9. Now what do you think would happen if I did this? It might look the same and the only difference is that I added a bracket, but the answer would be completely different. It's minus 5. Because I told I added brackets, Python automatically notes, notices that at, they should start by adding this and then using the extra information. Okay, so whatever you see in brackets is the thing that happens first in Python. Alright. Let's move on to using multiplication and addition or subtraction or division in a question. Let me type this. Okay, so here's my question. Si 7 times 9 plus 5. Okay, so 7 times 9 is 63 plus 5 is, well, let's see what it is. It's 68. Okay, so... This is my answer. Now, what do you think happens if I do 5 plus 7 times 8, or times 9, sorry. Do you think the answer might change? It doesn't change, it doesn't change because in the order of operation, multiplication and division happens before subtraction and addition. Well, I hope you get the hang of it. You're going to have to understand it before actually putting it on Python. Now let's move on to exponent. And exponent actually means to the power of. So for exponent, we use double asterisk, which is the multiplication sign. Okay, so this is 
when you use double asterisk or double multiplication sign, it actually means exponent, which is the power of. Oh, sorry. So if I type 4 and add 2 asterisks, 4 to the power of 2, the answer is supposed to be 16. Yup, Python is smart. What I mean by 4 to the power of 2 is 4 times 4, which is 16. Let me try a different big number. So I'm probably not going to be able to do this in my brain, but luckily Python can help. And I'm going to be doing it to the power of this now. Oh, I don't know what happened. They're giving me nothing. It's probably because there's no more space to do it over here. I'm not sure. Okay, um, I'm plus the greater than signs are gone. It, when I press enter, they're not coming. So let's open Python again. Or let's just type 3 plus 5 here and let's see if this will work when there is no greater than signs. It, nothing happens. <laughs> Looks like there's an error in Python. Well, let me close this and open Python again. When you want to type a question, those greater than signs should always be there. Okay, now let's continue typing our question. We were typing a massive number to the power of. So, double asterisk. And here. Whoa! Oh my gosh. That is a massive number. And I get why it wasn't breaking in the first place. Well, let's try another number. So I have 456 to the power of, whoa, this is going to be a lot. Looks like there's no more space again for this. One question takes so much place. Let's open Python again and let's type in a different question. Right. Press enter. Oh my gosh, it's squeezing text 456 lines. That means that the questions is too big to be filled on the Python shell. Like, way too big. Oh my gosh. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Because it's really fun to get your answer by just typing it don't you think here i got this because it's pretty small but i hope you guys enjoyed this video and had fun getting your math homework done well keep programming and i'll see you guys next time on programming kids bye for now